All right. So let's get back into the game here. Totally normal looking. Yep. It's Everything's good old, fine. Good old Lando Kylo. Yeah. Chances are we're going to see this DOS prompt a few times during the run. <laughs> it won't yep. be my fault, though. Fingers crossed. All right. So ready to count down? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. All right. So this is Daggerfall. So uh, in Daggerfall, we start off by making our own completely balanced character. Um, for whatever reason, again, Bethesda things, they left in a debug key that lets us reset this number right below my mouse cursor. Uh, that lets us make a custom class. Um, normally, it would say, like, hey, you, you need to balance out your skills and all that. But instead, we just hit the U key, and, and it doesn't worry about it. Um, these skills that I'm picking here uh, will come into play much later. But for now, let's just say that there for going fast. Um, athleticism, major 3x for triple spell stuff, and then spell absorb is important. This stuff is just to balance out all the cool stuff that I just selected. These don't worry about. This is also just going fast. Um, here we're going to be the law. That's <laughs> totally built into the game. All right. So speed is important. That governs how fast we run. So does the, the run primary skill. Uh, I just need to make sure that those are above destruction in their, uh, their number. Reflex is very high, determines how quickly enemies move towards me. So now we're inside the game. I'm going to delete my spells, and then we are going to literally cheat. All right. Yeah, it's good. First dungeon. It's pretty good. Mm. There we go. We did it. <laughs> So I'll explain the literally cheating later, um, but it's it's maybe not cheating. <laughs> Community is fine with it. Okay, so what this is right here is something called buffer jumping. Um, this makes moving much faster, even without a horse, than just normally walking. All right, so here we're going to take out a loan, uh, 50k, and then withdraw 49k because Daggerfall like models taxes and all that and and withdraw fees because of course. Of course it would. <laughs> um, here we're in the Mage's Guild. We're going to buy uh, a few spells. First spell that I'm making is a leveling spell. This will become apparent why I'm making this in uh, about 30 seconds. OK, off to a good start with the typing. Second is teleport. This is just you know to teleport. Next one is uh, levitate. After that is a damage spell. Uh, the important one for this is that it is area range. We'll call it boom. Boom. And then another traditional thing, slow fall, but it's going to be slog, slog fall. fall. Slog fall. Of course. Okay. So that's all those spells all done. And now we go on to a brief, brief level grind. Believe me, it's, it's brief. Shorter than arena. <laughs> so I'm going to turn down my in-game sound here because I... You probably don't want to listen to the spell spam. Um, so what's going on here is that uh, Daggerfall is one of the few Elder Scrolls any percent runs that actually requires you to be a certain level before you could actually do stuff. Um, in Arena, you just kind of needed to get to level 2 in the first dungeon. Um, then you could just do whatever. In this one, you actually need to get to about level 7 and then a little bit. Um, the end a little bit is just another Bethesda thing. Uh, Apparently, there's varying levels of level seven, but you that's be, you have to be really level seven. Yeah, you got to make sure that you're seven. actually level seven. <laughs> the number might say seven, but never trust Bethesda numbers. <laughs> so uh, what's going on here is that I made a leveling spell in the Mages Guild, um, and I'm casting that leveling spell every single frame um, by holding down the open spellbook button and the Enter key. Uh, so that's given me training in three different uh, three different schools of magic. I'm also casting slow fall immediately when I uh, zone into the area here. I'm holding forward, run, and uh, jump at the same time. So I'm holding about six keys down. Very important you have a good keyboard to do this. Uh, and you can see at the top of the screen, it's giving me skill ups. So as you get skill ups, those go into a pool of about 20. Once that pool reaches 20, you get a level up. That's essentially how the, uh, how the system works. There's a bit more complication to that, but that's essentially what's going on here. So I need to make sure that I am level seven, like actually level seven. We're level six right now, so we got a little bit more to do. Luckily, this is fairly short, so not a big deal. 
Um, another thing to point out here that every single dot on the map is a place you can go to. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different like little provinces here in the map, and each one has like 60 dots on it. And unlike Arena, this stuff is all statically in the game. Yeah, like th everything's going to be the same layout every time. Everything's going to be in the same spot every time. So we're level 7 now, but just to make sure that I'm level 7, um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, just use the, uh, the spell spam on my way here. And now we're on our way to the first, uh, first quest of the game. So another thing here is that I'm looking up in the sky a lot when I'm doing these, uh, these buffer jumps. Um, because 90s DOS game, uh, the frame rate is higher when you're not drawing stuff. Um, and you get much more distance on your jumps if you do that. So here I'm going to quick save the game and then click on the door and hold down uh, forward run and jump. And this is going to, again, do a buffer into uh, an interior part of the level. Um, for whatever reason, buffer dumps don't work anywhere near as well. Did I say buffer dumps? I meant yeah, buffer jumps. Did. Oh, well. Um, so there here are we're buffer going to dumps, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's when the game really crashes. <laughs> All right, so we, uh, we talked to the quest giver there, set a teleport anchor in front of her for a quick return to her, and then uh, going on down here to our like, next quest step. So in Daggerfall, um, if you believe hard enough, walls don't exist. So we're just going to do this. And uh, we're currently in space. So believe it or not, Daggerfall isn't actually an RPG. It's actually a space flight sim because we're <laughs> clearly in space right now. So we can, uh, we can interact with NPCs through walls, which is another nice thing. Um, they can't hurt me, which is the other nice thing. Uh, so we can essentially just go out of bounds, uh, interact with the NPC, and then just peace out. So there I Alt F11 to the door. Uh, I made sure to hold down the travel key as I open this map because the game does weird stuff with, um, with loading stuff. And now we're off to Daggerfall. So uh, this is the start of the werewolf quest. And as I'm running over to the uh, castle Daggerfall, I'll actually tell you what Alt F11 is. So in, <laughs> in the most recent patch of uh, Daggerfall, this is on the most recent patch. I'm, I'm sensing a trend here. Yeah. It's really weird. Uh, <clears throat> um, they put in a hotkey because players were, also this is currently happening. <laughs> Just Kung fuing really hard. Yep, we're Don't kung fuing out it. of bounds. This is called the Dirac drop. Shout outs to Dirac. Uh, players were just playing the game casually and then they would fall through the floor and die um, or just fall out into the void. So, because people got so upset about that, Bethesda put in a hotkey. Uh, King, King Hearts hold. hold. Okay. Um, a hotkey to put players. No e. King, King, King Heart. Heart. Yeah. Let's just do that. There we go. That Good looks save, right. Chaps. We did it. We got Thank you, Chops. That's why you're here. <laughs> All right. So this is the werewolf quest. This is the, by far and away, the worst quest in the game. So um, a lot of people think Daggerfall is random. It actually isn't. Like we mentioned before, everything on the world map is going to be in the same exact spot every time, same layout, same everything. Um, one of the exceptions to that is placement of enemies in dungeons. Uh, oh, man. We got a bad one. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, so this is one of those, those quests where we're looking for an enemy in a randomish spot in the dungeon. Um, and it's kind of down to uh, pretty much luck on if you can find it or not. So um, I can narrow down my search in a lot of ways by knowing which, um, which of these cells here uh, the werewolf has potential to spawn in. So I can... I can make educated guesses as to where the werewolf is going to be. Yeah. A lot of the enemies here you can start seeing from far away, but the quest enemies in particular can only show up when they're really, really close. Yeah. Yeah. Which would which makes this way harder than it should be. Yep. And so uh, <laughs> if you want to know where most runs die, it's here. Yeah, this can take anywhere from like literally the first room you check to actually infinite amount of time. Yep. Like it your computer will just break before you find it. So it could be here. And of course it isn't. Uh, okay, so luckily this is why I made a save before I talked to woman in the castle here. Um, the location uh, of the dungeon and the location of the werewolf in the dungeon isn't set until you talk to her. So we got Castle Kingford now. We'll give this one a go. Castle Kingford. All right, so try number two. Um, it's time for sure. 
Yeah, definitely this time. I got a good feeling. Uh, the unfortunate thing here is that we're getting castle dungeons, which isn't good. Um, so one of the things I can do to make this a little bit easier is that uh, I have audio cues. So I'm listening for uh, the werewolf mating call, um, which is much different from the mummy mating call, which we'll, <laughs> we'll get in touch with later. Um, that's the, uh, the zombie. Oh, no, the, the giant mating call. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. Just contemplating All right, it could it. be like right here. Of course not. Of course it's not there. All right. So this is another bad dungeon. Um, this layout is enormous, and there's only a few places where the thing can be. Also, orcs here, um, they make the same noises that werewolves make, <laughs> which is why it's unfortunate that we're getting castle-type castle, um, castle -type areas because uh, there's a certain like spawn list that the game chooses from. Um, so based off of what type of area it is, you'll know which um, kinds of monsters are going to spawn. All right, this is the last room I'm going to check before we pull the parachute on this one. All mm -hmm. right, there we go. So definitely first try, th third try, maybe. Third time's the charm. So this is, this is the beauty of the werewolf quest. This can, this can do this. Uh, Theodric, actually, I have done this one before. This one should be fine, probably. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Perry's one of the better runners because he's just had to go to so many of these locations that he has memorized all of these possible... Yeah, there's realities. there's probably like a hundred, maybe, different places that you can go just for this um, just for this quest. And once you do enough Daggerfall runs, you start to see um, the same ones kind of popping up. So here we got the Flame Atronax, which are better than the the orcs. They make different noises than uh, than everything else. If you're really lucky, you can also get a dungeon that just has werewolves or werebores yep. spawn normally. <laughs> And Those you have to find great. the correct one. Oh, I hear it. I hear it. We might actually have one of those. Okay, there it is. All right, this should be it. Yo, hey. there it is. We did yeah. It. We did it. All right. Nightmare's over. Okay. That's why it's important to have audio cues. I wouldn't have found that otherwise. All right, also important, save the game, because the game can just kind of blow up at any time. Uh, so here we're going to... Oh, man. Okay. Get Ooh. hype. Ooh, yeah. Those of you who know, <laughs> if I can spell this right, this has a really long name. Uh, that's not it. Okay, hold on. And now we got to <laughs> wait for it to work. So this, this is another <laughs> unfortunate thing with Daggerfall is that um, some of the towns have really, really, really long names. Um, Charinbra Hamlet. Okay, let me try and spell that. Charinbra? Charinbra Bra. Ham. There we Bruh. go. Okay. So a lot of the towns, even the ones with like stupidly long names, um, share like the beginning of their names with a few other towns. So for this one, like Charon, if I just typed in Charon, it would send me to somewhere that's not this usually, like Charoning or Charon Town or any other place. Everywhere except where I want to go. And another great thing here is that I have to ask around NPCs um, where to go. Actually, I don't. Never mind. Um, so I know that uh, the place I'm going to is a general store, and it should be this. I could tell based off of the name of the, uh, the place. And while we're here, this is also important Daggerfall tradition. This is RNG manipulation for Yeah, this air. is this totally is... manipulation. We absolutely need to do this. There we there go. There we go. Looking All sharp. Right. All right. It's even a good design. It's the best. All right. So the, uh, the quest NPC I'm looking for, if I can stop getting stuck on stairs, uh, is not that guy. Okay, it wasn't even the store. Great. <laughs> there, Great. Were, there were two stores. There's apparently two general stores, which almost never happens. <laughs> All right, well, well, what's actually important is that we got a sweater. So that means the rest of the run is going to go great. All right, so this is also apparently a general store. Why are... Th uh, sure, sure. <laughs> This Welcome one's more to Daggerfall. specific. Two general stores, no ends. What a great town. There we go. Okay. So that guy said eight days in Grimfort. Um, in this quest, the NPCs lie to you for some reason. Uh, so he said eight days in Grimfort. It is actually six days in Grimfort. Um, so the unfortunate thing with this one is that there is a time range. Two, four, uh, let's do three and three. Yeah. Um, there's music. A, ti a time. Yeah, don't worry about the sound blaster. <laughs> it's just a sound blast and... Um, <laughs> it's doing its thing. There's a time range in which the quest NPC will actually be in town. 
And if you're not in town in that certain range of dates, uh, the NPC will just leave or will just not be there. And if the NPC leaves, you fail the quest. If you fail a quest in Daggerfall for whatever reason, or decline it, which is another thing you could do, um, you can't get it back again. And the GG. GG. All you can do is just like cry or hex edit your save or something. Because, um, hey, that's Daggerfall for you. It's real gaming is what it is. Yeah, this is proper DOS gaming. You make a mistake, you live with it. <laughs> All right, so the, um, the person for this leg of the quest is always going to be in a uh, palace. They always look the same. Um, so when I look on the map, I'm looking for a, uh, right there, that big building off to the west of me. So once I go inside, I usually almost always have to uh, pick the lock. I'm going to save the game because there's unfortunate things that can happen here if I misclick. Okay, we know. I didn't, okay. <laughs> it turns out I already goofed and I didn't even know it. All right. So we're heading back to Daggerfall now to go turn in that quest. Um, we actually got to the courier. And now we're heading back to the palace. Okay, this is a pretty short walk. Yeah, so. yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, we have time for a quick donation. You got one? I've got quite a few donations. All right. We have $50 from Fox Die. Had to donate again after watching the Elder Scrolls Arena run. Completely confused by everything that is happening, but can't stop laughing. <laughs> Thank you, runners, for the passion you bring to these games and the ridiculous tricks you find. Thank you. Don't worry. We're, we're just as confused oh, with yeah. these games. <laughs> it's only going to get worse. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you think these games are broken, but you know we're still making our way through. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. So there I had to turn in the quest with, uh, with the Dowager Queen, and now we're starting up the next one. Um, so you might have noticed that I blew up a zombie a few towns ago. Um, that's Zombie. Zombie isn't actually a zombie. Zombie is a letter. For whatever reason, they, they stitch their letters into zombies and then send them off to kill you. And then that's how this guy in particular communicates. Yeah, these necromancers are very friendly. Yep, they're very edgy. <laughs> so another thing here is that um, as I'm falling through into the void here, um, even though I come to a stop naturally, um, I have to cast slow fall first before I levitate, um, which is <laughs> something you have to do because for whatever reason, the levitate spell acts as if there's a solid platform underneath your feet um, moving you up and down, which if you're already moving down very quickly by falling, putting a platform underneath your feet is just going to result in, in sadness. So that's why you have to cast slow fall first because slow fall will always just catch your fall regardless of what you're doing. And that right there is why the Alt of Eleven exists in the first place. Yeah, because <laughs> I, you so might easy. notice I got stuck in the door. <laughs> you can also easily get stuck in these stairs. This is just Daggerfall things. Um, so our current quest here is to uh, go and get a soul from a lich that's inside the palace in Sentinel here. And uh, oh, we had Sound Blaster. Okay, so somebody's leaning on the, the Sound Blaster keyboard right now. Just don't worry about that. That's just Sound Blaster. At least it's a good note. Yeah. Sometimes we get a really annoying one, and it just lasts for minutes. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> there it is. All right. <laughs> so here, when I made my character, um, I gave myself the Spell Absorb General perk. And that was important because the damage spell that I made is area at range. So what I'm actually doing is I'm casting a damage spell that is damaging stuff around me. Um, but it's not damaging me, and I'm also um, getting back all the MP I used to cast it um, immediately. So I can just infinitely cast this damage spell right at my feet and uh, makes things very fast. Yeah, I think the spell name is, is very appropriate there. Just yep. boom. It's pretty good. All right. So here is a pretty precise setup that I have to do. Hopefully I get it. All right. So I'm looking at the compass down the bottom right. All right. I'm doing a buffer jump off of the... Um, off of that roof there. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm moving forward very quickly and slowly falling down towards the ground. Um, this is because there is a quest area in the middle of this island that I'm on. Um, and normally we'd have to do two quests to get the fast travel location of this, uh, this place in the middle of the island. But as we established before, everything in Daggerfall is always there all the time, um, regardless if it's like a quest area or not or just some shack in the middle of nowhere. So if we can get there, then we don't really need the fast travel location. So what we're doing is we're just 
um, using an extreme example of that buffer jump to um, travel very far, very fast. And there we landed. All right. So it should be one more jump here to get where we're going. Okay, maybe one more. There we go. Okay, so we arrived where we are. I didn't screw up the probably pixel perfect thing that we have to do. <laughs> and now we're going to Kung Fu Out of Bounds again. Um, if you're wondering how this works, my answer is... Uh, Daggerfall? But yeah. Bethesda thing. Sure. Todd Howard willed it so. We're going to see an even weirder application of this in a little bit. Um, so for this one, you're moving so fast that you clip through the floor in front of the door when you enter this area. Um, the one I do in the next part makes even less sense than that did. Um, so here I need to set a teleport anchor here at Medora. Alt F11 back to there. Um, I need to not do that because the game will crash. I'm going to save because the game might actually crash now. We might get our first crash. Uh, will it? Okay, we're good. It's um, stable. It's yeah, a, it's, it's a good it'll game. be fine. It's a current patch. Don't worry about it. All right, so here is... This should do it. So if we're falling downwards... Okay, good. so what just happened was... That's worth um, the clip, I think. <laughs> I fell through the floor so hard that it put me above the door that I came in from. It's just... <laughs> just dagger fall thing. Sure. It's handy, though, because it's it gets us way closer to where we're actually going. So um, our quest giver here wants us to help her escape from her prison. And in order to escape, she needed a unicorn horn. Um, sure. Dagger sure. falls pretty good. Uh, so now we're off to another kind of randomish thing, but not really. Um, this is Orsinium. This is the capital of the orcs. In Arena and Daggerfall, orcs are still an enemy, um, enemy faction. And the quest that I'm doing right now is what makes them canonically uh, available in later, later games as playable races. So here we're going to do that thing again where we go downwards. Oh, geez. Oh, oh, we're fine. We're fine. Oh. Okay, we're fine. Uh, <laughs> we did that clip so hard that we went above the door we entered. Here's our boy Gortwog, Cathedral Jubith. Okay, so there's five different, um, five different dungeons the next quest can send us on. And uh, this one is relatively fast. Uh, so um, kind of like the werewolf quests, uh, we're looking for a mummy. Remember I mentioned the mummy mating call earlier. This is where that comes into play. So here we're going to get this letter if I can pick it up. All right, so not get blown up here. We did it. Yeah. Congrats on not being Congrats blown up. Congrats on not blown up. <laughs> All right. on the PC not blown up. Yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, the, um, this, is a, this is a game from 1996. The, uh, the practice PCs that I used earlier in the week couldn't run this game properly. Because <laughs> this is actually a pretty strenuous game to run. Um, and we run this on DOSBox, by the way. Another important note I should mention um, is that uh, Daggerfall and Arena are both $0. They are free on um, elderscrolls.com. So if you saw the Arena run and thought, yeah, I want to I wanna run that one. That looks good. Um, <laughs> Who wouldn't? That can be yours for the, the low, low price of $0. It's kind of a pain setting it up, but once you have it set up, you're all good. All right, so we, we killed that mummy, and we took the mummy dust from him. Again, don't worry about that. Uh, we're going to give it to give the mummy dust to her. She's going to do something with it. Um, and then I'm intentionally not setting a teleport anchor there because uh, we're going to be setting an anchor somewhere else. We will be returning to uh, Medora later. But we have a much faster teleport anchor to set. Uh, so f the next few quests here are kind of they're kind of set. They're the same every time. Um, so I'm just going to Castle Daggerfall right now. We got time for another donation or two. Nice hot box, by the way. Yeah. All right, we have a seventy-five dollar donation from Tapioca. Awesome job on the arena run, Purry. Why don't you submit seventh cross to this marathon? Oh man. <laughs> yes. Heck yeah. And just oh, geez. Oh, okay, we're oh, good. You're fine. No problem. <laughs> okay. He looks fine. Sometimes that happens. You move so fast that no matter how fast you click, the door just doesn't want a door. <laughs> okay. We got time for another one if you got one. So I was just going to give a quick update on the Oblivion donation incentive. We have raised almost $6,000 for the nice. five-minute Oblivion run. Let's do it. 
I believe. So you guys heard Maddie. Let's do it. Yeah. We have $15,000 to raise and not a whole lot of time to do it. So definitely get to donating if you would like to see the entire Elder Scrolls anthology ran at SGDQ this year. This is new. What? Okay. Oh. Evidently, I clicked there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> sure. Just Daggerfall. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if the game did lock up there, but that's never happened. Usually, the game is, makes it very, very obvious when it crashes. So that would have been... Very weird if it did. Okay, so we're uh, uh, for the last quest when I gave Medora the uh, the mummy dust. She essentially said, "Hey, come back in 30 days." So we spent 30 days um, doing another quest, and we did that. So our current leg of the quest is kind of the actual main quest of the game. So as far as the the overarching main story thing goes, the uh, the king of Daggerfall was murdered. The emperor sent you to investigate it. You were shipwrecked in Daggerfall, and then political intrigue happens. Um, he gets politics. sidetracked a lot. Yeah, a lot of good politics stuff. If you love that, then you'll love Daggerfall. Um, but the, uh, the old king of Daggerfall turned into a spooky ghost, and he started haunting uh, the capital city of Daggerfall. So we're going to go check in with Spooky Ghost King and find out what his problem is. So okay. we're doing another um, kind of sequence break here. We're skipping a quest that we would normally do to get this fast travel location. Um, so I could do another jump off of a roof in the precise location of this place. And luckily, I've done this run enough times that I can navigate this when there's dense fog. Um, good luck doing that if you're new to the run. <laughs> you just turn a little bit to the right and you go. It's yeah, easy. It's, some places, it's so easy to get lost. All right, so here, we're flying on down to uh, where Spooky Ghost King is. Um, so your uh, horizontal movement in Daggerfall is uh, determined by your speed stat. Your levitate up and down and your swim up and down speed is set, no matter what you do. Um, the only way to go faster is to use stuff like this, this slope surface here, to go down faster. And you can use the top of slope surfaces to go up faster. That's pretty much the only way to do that. So we optimize our route through, uh, through dungeons so that we, we make sure to hit those properly. And you guys probably thought we didn't have speed tech like that. I know. We got so much hot tech in this run. All right, so this is Woodborne Hall. This is this kind of wraps up the the spooky ghost story. Um, so it it turns out Lord Woodborne is the uh, the person who murdered the previous king of Daggerfall. Okay, good. There's going to be an enemy after me at the end of this. Great. Um, so here we're going to use this to go up a bit higher and then fly over to where Lord Woodborne is. Um, for Lord Woodborne, it's Lord Woodborne, but um, for the quests, all it says is just. Lord Woodborne is a knight class, so just spawn a knight. So there's Lord Woodborne. Um, <laughs> sure, that's that's a lady, but sure thing, Daggerfall. Identical. All right, so here, didn't get blown up by guy. So good. We uh, we blew up Lord Woodborne. We got vengeance for Spooky Ghost King. I skipped a couple cutscenes there because it's just Spooky Ghost being spooky. Um, the Lion and Castle Tavern. So this is the last um, random elements in the run. Um, the person for this quest will always be in a town in this area, and they'll always be in an inn. And what inn she is in is random, and nice. we yoloed it and Yolo. got a first try. Sweet. So luckily, we got a small town there that only had one inn, and I was right next to the inn. So that is handy. So this is the second or last quest in the game. We're almost there. Uh, so for this, we need to steal a totem. Um, like towards the end of the main quest, you find out about this totem. It's this artifact of power that uh, allows you to control a giant golem that was used to conquer Cyrodiil, I guess. Uh, just lore stuff. So here it is. It, it kind of looks like a baby. Um, so we steal that. And then we're back in Castle Daggerfall, and we give it back to the guy that we stole it from because <laughs> that's a thing you can do. There's like seven different endings. And this is by far and away the fastest one. So here we're going back to Shidungeon. And on to the final quest in the game. So uh, an interesting note for, for this is that in the most recent patch, again, another thing with the most recent totally stable, totally fixed version of the game, um, Bethesda put in an entrance to the final dungeon of the game just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So if you buy a boat in the game, um, and you jump off the boat. Oh, God. OK. Hey, I'm just missed. trying not to get blown up here. <laughs> this is the last spot you can die. OK, we're good. Um, Real fighting. 
if you uh, if you get a boat and then just kind of go out in the middle of nowhere, um, you can actually get to this dungeon about two minutes into the run. Um, so originally we thought that that was any percent for um, for Daggerfall, but if you go and do that at the start of the game, um, you can get all the way to the end of this dungeon, but once you get to the end, it doesn't actually trigger the end of the game. Can I interrupt uh, with a quick announcement? Absolutely. We have just passed $500,000. Yo! <laughs> Amazing. All right, get ready on time, by the way. So here's the end of the dungeon. Time is coming up in a few seconds. This is random when this pops up. I have no <laughs> control over this. And... Time. All right. All right, spook alert for this cutscene. Here's the new spooks. Cover your eyes. Man, so spooky. Great new video comes to the call of the Dragon of Daggerfall. The armies of Sentinel and Wayless fall like scattered leaves in Daggerfall. All right, so that's one of the uh, like seven-ish endings. Um, which ending you get is determined by which um, uh, which uh, guy you send the totem. Yeah, to. guy you send the totem to. So I gave it to the guy who is in Castle Daggerfall. Um, you can also give it to Gortwog for the orcs. You can give it to uh, someone in Sentinel, I think. You can also give it to um, like the Necromancer guy. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of different things here. So we mentioned before um, Spooky Ghost King. Hopefully we get it here. So this is something I usually like to show at the end of runs. Yeah, just a quick wrap up Yeah, here. this only takes a second. I think he's being a bit shy right now. He's being real shy. All right, where is it? Vengeance. All right, Vengeance. perfect. So that's, uh, that's Spooky Ghost King. And another thing you can do here in Daggerfall is that if you hold, hold. if you just get a guard here and then try to pickpocket the guard, it starts spawning infinite hold. guards. Hold. <laughs> so you can do this. And I think the perfect way to end our time with Daggerfall is <laughs> kung fu Some, like this. Sometimes you just got to kung fu into the sky. <laughs> While we have vengeance going. All right. So thank you all for watching Daggerfall. Um, this is going to close itself in a second. Uh, remember to get those donations in for uh, Oblivion Any Percent. Because we want to get that in and get the full anthology. This will be the first time ever that the entire anthology has been at a marathon. So this is a very common screen that you see in Daggerfall. Common, yes. <laughs> Point. So anyways, that's it. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest. All right, great job, Perry. Perry taking care of that little crisis. We are going to take a quick commercial break, uh, so don't go away. We'll be continuing with our Bethesda block in just a moment.